Okay, we're now at uh, section 19.7, Ampere's Law. And uh, here we are. Uh, during a lecture demonstration in 1819, Danish scientist Hans Orsted found that an electric current in a wire deflected a nearby compass needle. This momentous discovery linked a magnetic field with an electric current for the first time. In 1820, Orsted did an experiment similar to the one shown in the figures. As you can see, several compass needles are placed on a horizontal plane near a long vertical wire. When there is no current in the wire, as shown in the figure on the left, all needles point in the same direction, that of the Earth's field, as one would expect. But when the wire carries a strong, steady current, as shown in the figure on the right, the needles all deflect in, the, in directions tangent to the circle. Okay. Um. To determine the direction of the field, we need a second right-hand rule, right-hand rule number two. And I'm not gonna change this one. This is the one that we're gonna use. Uh, point the thumb of your right hand along a wire in the direction of positive current, as in the figure on the left. Your fingers then naturally curl in the direction of the magnetic field. When the current is reversed, the filings in the figure on the right also reverse. Because the filings point in the direction of B, we can conclude that the lines of B form circles about the wire. By symmetry, the magnitude of B is the same everywhere on a circular path centered on the wire and lined in a plane perpendicular to the plane. I mean, perpendicular to the wire, excuse me. By varying the current and distance from the wire, it can be experimentally determined that B is proportional to the current and inversely proportional to the distance from the wire. These observations lead to a mathematical expression for the strength of the magnetic field due to the current I in a long straight wire. Um, the proportional, for, proportionality constant mu sub zero is called the permeability of free space. So the magnetic field B is equal to mu zero I divided by two pi R, where mu zero is uh, four pi times 10 to the minus seven Tesla meters per amp. Okay, uh, let's, see. let's use Ampere's law to derive the magnetic field due to a long straight wire carrying the current I. As we discussed earlier, each of the magnetic field lines of this configuration forms a circle with the wire at its center. The magnetic field is tangent to this circle at every point and its magnitude has the same value B over the entire circumference of a circle of radius R. So B parallel equals B as you can see in the figure. Um, notice that B parallel can be removed from the sum because it has the same value B for each element on the circle. Our equation then gives us the equation shown here. There. Um, let's divide both sides by the circumference, that is 2 pi r. Um, This is the result we expect, the magnetic field due to the current in a long straight wire. Uh, note that Ampere's law in this form is valid only when the currents and fields don't change with time, so direct current uh, circuits. Uh, this ends this section. Uh, the main point here is V is equal to mu zero, uh, mu zero I times, uh, divided by two pi R. Uh, this ends this section on Ampere's law. The next section is 19.8, magnetic force between two parallel wires.